Hey guys, what a week. On Wednesday, America fell victim to a domestic terror attack. As Congress met to accept the Electoral College votes in what was supposed to be just a basic clerical process and one of the final things that needed to be done before Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th, turned into a total mess. Domestic terrorists took hold the Capitol building. They stormed it, they broke through windows. Their goal was to overturn the election and take hostage the political process and stage a coup. We learned on Wednesday that American democracy is extremely frail, but it's also very resilient. The biggest takeaway for me on Wednesday was that words matter. After months of working to sow distrust, stoke the fears, encourage conspiracy theories, and peddle disinformation to supporters, Donald Trump's last act at the rally on Wednesday was to tell his supporters they had to be strong and fight for their country and to march down to the Capitol. He even offered to walk them. As his supporters took everything he said to heart, they showed up in mass at the Capitol. They broke through and busted through. They had militia gear on. They were having, they had zip ties and pepper spray. For the first time in American history, we saw images of the Confederate flag being waved in the halls of Congress, not even during the Civil Wars that ever happened. The last time our capital was attacked was during the War of 1812 when the British burned it down in 1814. Words matter. We have platforms that we love to use, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Our leaders use them too. It's a great way to connect with friends, to see what elected officials are doing, and to learn more about the political process. But the one thing it should never be used for is to stoke fears, to sow distrust, and to peddle conspiracy theories all of which our president and his supporters have done so for the past four plus years. When we look to our elected officials, we hope that the words that they choose will matter. We hope they'll be steeped in fact, truth, and evidence-based. Unfortunately for those on the right, it hasn't always been the case. The past few months, we've seen Republican senators such as Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, Representatives Matt Gates, Senator Marco Rubio, Mo Brooks, and many others, continue to say that there's been fraud in our election. There's been no evidence to prove that. And in fact, as of today, Dominion is now suing people from Trump campaign, telling them that they've defamed their company, that in fact, there was no hacking of their machines. The thing about this is, is that when we get on these platforms or when we watch videos of our leaders, we hope that the things that they say will inspire us. In fact, in previous years, we've had inspirational leaders Barack Obama, Martin Luther King Jr., JFK, just to name a few. The words that they said inspired us, they motivated us, they reminded us what was so great about America and they challenged us to be the best that we are. But today's leaders on the Republican side aren't that. The president at the very top had an opportunity to use his platform for good. In fact, his wife even decided to run an anti-cyberbullying campaign called Be Best. The ir irony of all of that is that the biggest culprit of the person that is not being best and is one of the dominant bullies on social media is her husband. As we look ahead to the new year, I know that we're only eight days in and if you're keeping track, we're only two days of that incident of craziness under 2021. There's an opportunity for us. We can show others how we expect our platforms to be used and the words that we choose should be based in fact, truth and evidence. I would encourage all of you next time you're posting to social media to ask yourselves if in fact what you're sharing is fact or fiction. If it's fiction, maybe use a disclaimer or don't share it at all. I want to thank you guys for taking time to always watch my videos, to see me on television, and to read my pieces. I hope that the words that I use will inspire you and motivate you, and I hope that you understand that I don't take this position lightly. I use my platform for good and I encourage everybody to always check the facts. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, but understand that I know that this is a privilege and that my words mean something. And so when I tell you that it is important to choose your words carefully and be kind to one another, I wholeheartedly believe it. Now I know the images that we've seen replay over and over for the past few days are jarring. I understand what it feels like to be shaken to the core to realize that domestic terrorism is something that isn't a far-fetched idea anymore. We must stand together and call for justice, investigations, and ensure that the time that this happens is only once. I would love to be optimistic and say that I think that that's a reality, but it probably won't be. 
Every chance we get going forward, we must call out by name those culprits and those people that refuse to accept fact, that continue to peddle lies, that continue to sow discord and allow disinformation to seep through their platforms. They must be called and they must be voted out. Now I'm looking at you, Marco Rubio. I'm looking at you, Ted Cruz and Matt Gates. The list goes on. I would hope that you would join me in calling your Congress members to call for the impeachment of the president yet again. I know he's only been impeached once and it didn't seem to do much, but here's hoping a second time gets him removed from office because I can tell you as sure as I sit here, every single day that that man remains in office is one more day that America's democracy remains in peril and continues to find itself in danger. I know he only has a few weeks, but a lot of damage can be done. I mean, just look at what he's done in the past few days. Going forward, I hope that you'll remember this, that words matter and you'll choose carefully. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for entrusting me with your time. I hope you have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week when we can maybe get back to talking about things a little more lighthearted, a little more steeped in history and a little less terrifying. Have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye.